Tribal trails, tribal trails The Son of God, He is near He chose to walk with us These tribal trails Our guest today is David Dunn from Calgary, and we're very pleased to have you with us today, David. Thank you, Rita. I'm very, very happy to be here. We're excited about what you're going to share and how God has led in your life. David, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood? Uh, I'd be glad to. Um, I grew up on the mission field. Oh, okay. My parents were missionaries with the Missionary Church Association, Leonard and Wilma Dunn. They graduated from Prairie Bible uh, in 1945 okay. and then uh, went to the mission field. Um, I uh, went to the mission field as an infant mm. when I first went and uh, I was there until my, my middle teens. Okay. But um, to look at it now, it's astounding yeah. because they went with a $10 a month pledge support. Yeah. That was all that they had. <laughs> it was from People's Church in Toronto mm. and um, it was... Uh, Oswald Smith that actually um, sent them to the mission field, uh, but the Lord provided for them. They had saved the money to go, and uh, then the Lord provided from that point on. Yeah. But we learned a, a lot of lessons as children. When you say mission field, whereabouts would that be, David? Oh, Jamaica. In Jamaica? Yes. I grew up on, on the island of Jamaica. Oh, okay. And I uh, went to school. It was British schooling. Mm. And, uh, so, so really, really good childhood days. My sister... Uh, She's five years younger than I'm. I have two older brothers. Uh, and um, we, uh, as a family in Jamaica, really did learn, you know, to trust in the Lord okay. uh, for all of our needs. Mom and Dad, of course, uh, led the way with that. And I remember us being in prayer on our knees when we were probably around 10 or 11, and there was no money to pay the rent. Uh, Mom and Dad did not have it at all. And we were on our knees praying. Uh, and the uh, mailman came, we could hear him drop stuff in the door. And we prayed for a specific amount that we could, mom and dad could pay the rent. When we finished praying, they went and got the mail and there was a check with $2 more than they needed to pay the rent. And that impacted us children. Yeah. Uh, and dad explained, you know, we hardly know these people that sent this, but they had a burden some weeks ago to send support, the Holy Spirit, spoke to them, they sent it, and it was on the way before we even asked. And uh, that's nice heritage. That is. I remember that very well. Yes. Yeah. King David said, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Till the answer comes, gotta keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Till the answer comes, gotta keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. If you knock one time and there's no answer, don't turn away from the door. You've got to knock again until you've been let in. Sometimes it only takes once more. Till the answer comes, gotta keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Till the answer comes, gotta keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Sometimes you might be on your knees for hours before the light finally comes breaking through the dark. But if you truly believe, then his power can breathe life into your troubled heart. Till the answer comes, gotta keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Till the answer comes, gotta keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Sometimes it's hard to know whether God is going to answer in the time that we think he should. But if we keep praying and keep having faith in him, the answer will always come in the perfect time. If you knock one time and there's no answer, don't turn away from the door. You've got to knock again until you've been let in. Sometimes it only takes once more Till the answer comes, gotta keep praying Keep praying, 
Keep praying till the answer comes. Got to keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Till the answer comes. Got to keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Got to keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Keep praying till the answer comes. Jamaica uh, is a very, very beautiful uh, island, of course, and uh, churches everywhere. Oh, okay. Generally small churches, but my dad had a burden for evangelism. And so uh, he did pastor several churches through the years. They were there, I think, 16 years. And uh, he did a lot of evangelistic campaigns. Mm -hmm. Thousands and thousands of people came to know the Lord. And I think of one in a little town called Richie's near Devon in Jamaica, for anybody that might know Jamaica. Uh, there was supposed to be a one-week campaign, and it went for 10 weeks. And there were hundreds and hundreds of people that knew the Lord. And uh, people hanging from the rafters. You know, my dad loved to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So it was a very wonderful heritage. Yeah. The Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Rome, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Your mom and dad had a ministry. How did that speak to your heart? I learned a lot um, by their commitment and their sacrifice. Okay. Uh, my mom is a very, very gentle spirit and uh, mild. Um, a confidant to many people because okay. uh, she's very, very wise. But um, always had the softest hands in the world. You know, <laughs> my mom's hands were soft hands. Okay. Dad loved to be a minister of the gospel and to share the good news of salvation. And he led me to the Lord when I was seven. Oh, okay. Seven years old. I, he had preached a message in the church in Devon, in Jamaica, uh, that just literally scared me to death. Hmm. Uh, he preached on hell. <laughs> and, and I was a disturbed seven-year-old. And, and I came back home next door to the, uh, the manse that, were the, uh, uh, that we lived in, right next to the church. Okay. And I said to Dad, I said, Dad, I want to be saved. Uh, he had preached on hell. Yeah. And I said, I don't want to go to hell. And maybe my motive wasn't uh, quite right then, but Dad, um, Dad talked to me uh, very, very simply. Yeah. and just uh, asked me why I needed to be saved. Uh, I said, so I don't go to hell. Well, that wasn't the right answer. <laughs> you know, so he, he, he just uh, asked questions to draw out the fact that I was a sinner. Yes. And he asked me, well, are you a sinner? I said, no. Yeah. He said, well, have you ever done anything wrong? And the way he tells it, he said, that was the first time that my head took a little dip. <laughs> and uh, have you ever told a lie? And my head went a little lower. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he could remember, and I could remember the lies that I had yeah. told. And before long, uh, he had, yes, I, I am a sinner. That's, yeah. Then he explained, well, that's why the Lord died for your sins. Yeah. And uh, I remember accepting the Lord uh, with my dad leading me to the Lord. It was wonderful. Seven years old, and I've loved the Lord ever since, and just to wanted to please him, yeah. be a servant. And I do believe that there's enough understanding <laughs> for a seven-year-old yes. that you can understand the basic uh, ideas related to... Um, sin and guilt and repentance yeah. and, uh, and serving the Lord. Uh, you obviously will not have all the answers to yeah. uh, life's questions or to theology, but, um, but you know that the Lord died for you and yeah. you've accepted him as your savior. Yeah, wonderful to know that your sins are forgiven. It is. Yes, it is wonderful to know our sins are forgiven, but do you have that kind of assurance that our guest has? In Acts 10, the Apostle Peter spoke to Cornelius, a Roman centurion, where other people had gathered in his house. He said, all the prophets testify about him, that's Jesus, 
that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. You might ask, why Jesus? Because Jesus is the sinless Son of God. He suffered the wrath of God on the cross for the sins of the world so that the demands of God's justice are fully met. He has paid the penalty for our sins. So you're forgiven when you put your faith on His finished work on Calvary. If you have further questions, call us here at Tribal Trails. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now I am to Jesus every Two older brothers went to a boarding school, a Christian boarding school, which is still operating, one of the best schools on the island. My sister and I were at home. My sister is Patty Hill, oh. uh, singing hills. So oh, um, uh, whenever I, uh, people ask uh, who I am, I, I like to say, well, I'm Patty Hill's brother. Because <laughs> <laughs> then people know right away, because we're the two younger of the family. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, have uh, tended to be together. They've uh, lived very close to us for all through the years. Oh. And uh, we were there when they, I was teaching at Briarcrest, and we'll talk about that later, but when, when they um, began their singing ministry. Yeah. And that was exciting. Yes, yeah. it's very exciting. Yes. We've got tapes of them when they're just very small. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Quite a history. Yeah, so you came back from Jamaica. And where did you come to? Came back to Brantford, Ontario. Oh, okay. Uh, my family um, made Brantford, Ontario, just outside the Six Nations. Oh, okay. Uh, home, uh, that was where mum had grown up on the Six Nations. Uh, my dad uh, is British, although um, his father came from Edinburgh. Oh, okay. And so, um, so we are Scottish. Uh, our family, uh, Paddy and, and me, are uh, Mohawk. Um, Onondaga, Clear Sky is, uh, you know, on my, um, on my status card. And um, Roger is from the Seneca, but they're both from oh, the okay. Six Nations. Roger, uh, being Seneca, is very gentle, spirited. And, yes, he is. And known for his wisdom, yeah. which the Seneca were known for. Well, the Mohawks are a little bit more militant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like my sister, she's feisty. She's a true Mohawk. I, I like to be more of a peacemaker if I can, but... Uh, yeah, that, uh, that was where we came back and uh, all of us finished the school uh, and uh, I was working in accounting at Massey Ferguson 
pursuing accounting uh, program, mm. enjoying it very much. Okay. Uh, and then uh, our pastor's wife died very suddenly. Uh, they had been second parents to us, had visited us in Jamaica. When she died, it just had such a powerful impact on me. Um, the Lord sent me to Bible school. Okay. And uh, I remember our pastor at that time, the husband of Nancy Loveday, uh, her husband, Don Loveday, uh, who was a wonderful pastor, and they served together for 30 years at the same church. And um, that uh, when I met with him and told him that I really felt the Lord called me to Bible school, uh, he said, well, the Lord often takes one to send another. Hmm. I've never forgotten that. No. And I, I, I regret that. Maybe the Lord took her so that he could send me, but uh, that was what got us to Bible school. And I went to Emmanuel Bible College okay. uh, in Kitchener. My older, my next older brother had gone there and was still there. And he pastored, he's still a pastor today. Job said to the Lord, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Then from there, I just really felt the Lord uh, leading me to uh, go on for further schooling. Yeah. So I went down to uh, Indiana to Grace Theological Seminary okay. uh, and finished uh, a program there and then Later on, after my teaching, when I was near the end of my uh, teaching career, because uh, I taught for uh, between 30 and 35 years, depending on where you take the cutoff, okay. because I did some adjunct teaching after I uh, uh, took early retirement because of health issues. I had been going on archaeological work for, for many years and uh, just pursued a uh, program in archaeology. And so okay. that was also down in Indiana. Yeah. Mm -hmm mentioned teaching, so what, did, what exactly did you teach? The first 20 years were clearly uh, majoring in teaching theology oh, okay. uh, at Briarcus Bible College uh, mm -hmm. for 11 years, and then at Nippon Bible College uh, for nine years, and then uh, at Prairie for, and that's where you, you know, uh, it was from 1998 until 2010 to 12, somewhere in there, I was still teaching adjunct, you know, and so on. Um, we moved to Calgary, and uh, I was contacted by Prairie, and, uh, and they had me come up. They said they had a very definite need for a professor in Old Testament, and uh, wondered if oh. I could, could take that. They looked at my transcript and my teaching and felt that I could, and the Lord led us there. Mm -hmm. And it was very nice to go back to the school that my mom and dad had graduated yes. from. Yeah. And we've, uh, we've just loved it. We're still there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. You say we're still there. So obviously you're married. Yes. My wife is uh, Patricia. Okay. Uh, she's been a wonderful, wonderful partner. Uh, we're in our, well, we married 47 years. Okay. Uh, it'll be 48 this year. Where did you meet your wife? I met her at our home church, and um, we had a, a very wonderful courtship. I married quite young. I was just short of 20 when I married. Oh. So uh, we have three daughters, mm -hmm. uh, Pamela, Deborah, and Sandra, and they're just wonderful, wonderful girls. Uh, they love the Lord. They're all married. Uh, they're raising their families. Um, uh, Pam and her husband, Matthew, are in Calgary with um, Olivia and Nathaniel, mm. and then uh, our Second daughter, Deborah, is in Three Hills oh, okay. with our oldest grand granddaughter. Uh, Emily is 10, and her husband is uh, Colin. They're very active in, in their church. And then our youngest daughter is Sandy, and she's living in Oakville. But interestingly, she works for the Toronto Maple Leafs. She's the executive director, uh, the executive assistant to the general manager. Good for her. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. So in your walk with the Lord, it all sounds very easy, is it? You have to say yes and no, but uh, the, the no is very, very necessary because the Lord does not um, 
solve all of your problems when you come to know him. Yeah. What you do know is that uh, your sins are forgiven. Yes. You do know that he's going to be there to help you. Yeah. Uh, you do know that um, you have uh, a very, very definite purpose that he wants to work out through you. Yeah. But you still have life's battles. You still have life struggles. Um, you still have illnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone through cancer and uh, heart trouble that was the reason that I had to retire. Uh, oh, just okay. take early retirement after I was yeah. about 61. The Lord does not um, give you a paved road to travel. It's still a rough road, yeah. but the Lord is with you. And he points the way. When I was talking to you, you mentioned cancer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Well, the Lord's goodness, for one thing. I had been a really healthy little missionary boy <laughs> all my life. I never knew a day of sickness. Yeah. And um, I had a very, very minor little thing that I just mentioned to my doctor. I rarely went to see a doctor, but uh, a doctor in Calgary that I, uh, that, uh, who, who listened. Yeah. Who listened. And if anybody has a doctor that does not listen to what they're saying, you should switch doctors. Because <laughs> this doctor listened and picked up on a little statement that I made that was so insignificant, I'm amazed that she came back to that. And uh, that particular appointment, she said to me, she said, David, I'm not that concerned with what you came about, but tell me more about this little, I said, once in a while I have a little quiver in my, in my lower abdomen. Just, it, it's like a, like a little itch and I want to scratch it, you know? Hmm. She said, tell me more about that. And I said, well, there's nothing more to tell. I said, I just, yeah. I don't know what it is, you know? And she said, she said I'm gonna pursue that. And it was cancer. I upon this mountain, the sun is shining bright. My heart is filled with gladness here above the curse of life. But I've just come through this valley of trouble, fear, and pain. It was there I came to know my God. Enough to stand and say From the moment that my doctor said to me when I was going for the colonoscopy, okay. and she, I could tell she had a hint. Mm -hmm. uh, she said to me that it might be cancer and you need to be prepared for it. It might be mal malignant, I think she used the word. Yeah, okay. And I just, I just sat there and, and then she leaned forward and she said, did you hear what I said? <laughs> I said, yes, I heard. She said, well, you're not reacting. Uh, I said, no. I said, if it is, the Lord knows. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not catching him by surprise. Yeah. It's a surprise to me. I've never been sick. Yeah. But uh, so she was quite shocked. And then, um, you know, all the tests were ordered uh, leading up to going in for a colonoscopy mm -hmm. um, at uh, Peter Lougheed Hospital in Calgary. Uh, they discovered that my colon was completely blocked, that uh, oh. it was ready to burst my colon and oh, move wow. into the lymph system and... Uh, he, he, doctor told me, he said, you're not leaving this bed. You're going straight up to the operating theater on the fifth floor, I think it is. And he said, we'll find a surgeon and uh, we'll remove that today. And uh, I, I think that's miraculous. Yes, it is. How many people, you know, do have that experience? But that saved my life because they said it was just ready to move into the final stage. And then my sister Patty and Roger came in with yes. my brother who was visiting from Ontario. At that time, they all swooped in. My daughters started to swoop in. Uh, they thought the worst. Yes. You know, and, uh, and I was so totally at peace. You know, I said, it's in the Lord's hands. I just, I have no fear whatsoever. I said, the, the Lord knows. Yeah. And so we had a prayer meeting right there in the, in the uh, elevator, <laughs> holding up one of the elevators. Uh, and, and they all prayed, you know, and we just committed it to the Lord. And uh, yeah. Um, I just had peace all the way through, and the Lord is very good. They operated, uh, took it out. 
and uh, they t did an 18 inch resection yeah. and um, I had chemotherapy which uh, could have been much worse than it was. Um, I, I suffered a lot of nausea, yeah. but, um, but it, was, it was, compared to what some others have gone through, it was quite easy. Uh, but um, the lasting effects, if anything, are a lack of energy and, and uh, fatigue, you know. Yeah. But the Lord has been good and uh, always uh, carried me with a sense of His presence and that um, things don't happen outside of His control. Yeah. The Lord uh, was there from the start. Each day comes in its proper order. You know, and, and the Lord is always there. He's already been there in that day and prepared things. And uh, I, just, uh, I just rest in peace. Uh, I sing a lot in my mind. I love music. Oh, okay. When the Singing Hills sing, they sing with a smile and I sit there and I just cry like a baby. <laughs> I'm so proud of them and the music. Yeah. Music moves me faster than the spoken word. Um, oh. Well, the words are the music too. Yeah. But um, I, I'm very emotional when it comes to music. And the Lord always gives me a song, and my, I'm singing in my heart all the time. Okay. The Lord is really good. Do you want that kind of peace that David has? If you do, listen to what Jesus said to his disciples before he went to the cross at Calvary. Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I don't know what you have to contend with today, but you don't have to struggle with that issue on your own. Christ has promised you help and peace when you put your faith in him. That's what you need to do today. Maybe you need help. Call us here at Tribal Trails. David ends today's program with this thought. As I look at my life, I can see mm -hmm. that God's program is so detailed. Yeah. He knows where you're going to be, who's going to be crossing on the sidewalk at that moment, mm -hmm. and he puts things together. And people would say, well, that's just luck, coincidence, serendipity. What, whatever they say, I say, no, it's not. It's a divine appointment. It is. This road of life has led you to a valley of defeat. You wonder if the Father has heard your desperate plea. There is hope in that wondrous place where tears of sorrow dwell. Can't you hear him gently whispering? I'm here it all.